guy beside you, give him a high five and say, man, you look good. I'm going to tell him, you look good. We are stoked that you guys are here today. Uh, thanks for coming to Christian Life Center. Uh, we love the fact that we have an opportunity to be part of an amazing community right here in Rolla, Missouri. I want to say welcome, uh, especially today, to all of the uh, Missouri s and football team and coaches that are here. We are honored to have you as our guest today. Christian Life Center, would you let them know that? Thank you for joining us today. We're glad that you guys are here. We love the fact um, that, that football season starts. Uh, everybody don't know, but I'm, I'm a huge college football fan. I have been a fan since I was a kid, and I'm an Alabama Crimson Tide fan. Can I get a roll tide? I didn't figure that. But I, I have been a college football fan for a long time and love the fact that we have already passed the last weekend of no college football from now to the end of the year. We got it. I'm excited about it. Love it. Love it. We are starting a brand new series today called We is Greater Than Me. We is greater than me. You know, sometimes in our lives, the me about me, the, the things that I like, me want, me need, you know, all those things, it's always about me. But today we're going to talk about really what it looks like to have we more than me. Because I need you, you need me. We, we might not realize that, but we is greater than me. So look at somebody close to you and say, I need you. Just tell them that right now, I need you. And I'm going to help you to understand that today. Because we is greater than me. Me can do nothing by myself. Me, me, me. Sometimes everything we do in life is about me. But we're going to talk about the we. Here at Christian Life Center, the... The mission of our church is actually located on the wall when you go out of these auditorium doors. And before you go into the lobby, it says to love God, love others, and serve all. And when you begin to think about that, it's the mission of who God is. Today, we're going to talk about that and what it looks like. So if you've got your orange welcome packets, if you got one when you come in, you can grab that. Inside of there are some message notes, some scripture references. You can take a look at that. Uh, if you're joining us on live stream today, I want to say welcome to everyone who joins us on live stream. I know there are many of you out there watching. We are excited that you're here today. Uh, be sure and drop down in the comments section. Let us know where you are watching from. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, as we dive in, I, I want you to think about this, this context of we is greater than me. When you think about what does that look like, how, how, how do I operate in it, what has that got to do with church, what's that got to do with being, uh, being a, a Christian or, or becoming a Jesus follower. You see... The Word of God teaches us that, that we need each other. And sometimes we, we arrive at this place in our life where loving God is, is kind of easy. You know, there's some of us in the room, maybe you do love God, and you say, yeah, I, I love God. You know, I would never say I don't love God. Or maybe you're here today and you don't even believe in God, and that's okay too. Maybe you're here and you're like, yeah, well, I, I love God. I've been in church like a year or ten years. Maybe you've been in church your whole life. But the next part of that sometimes we, we struggle with, not loving God, but loving others. Loving others. The mission of our church is love God, love others. Well, I want to read a scripture to you. It won't be on the screen, but I, I want to read it to you. It's in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, and it, it says this. It says, Jesus said, everybody say Jesus. Jesus, he's the guy talking here, okay? It's in the Bible. Jesus said, I'm giving you a new commandment, to love each other as I have loved you. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if, everybody say if, if you have love one for another. So Jesus is given a commandment. Most people probably in the room, you've heard about the Ten Commandments. You might know that there's an Old Testament of the Bible. There's a New Testament. You know, the first half on the left-hand side is the Old Testament, the first two-thirds of it. The last one-third of the Bible on the right side is the New Testament. And, and in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, and a guy named Moses, God revealed the Ten Commandments. We know what they are. You've heard them. They, they've been posted in schools. You might have heard them as a kid or whatever. But Jesus came, and in the New Testament, the right-hand side of the Bible, Jesus made a statement. He said, a new commandment I'm given to you. He said, to love one another as I have loved you. And he goes on to say, by this, everybody's going to know that you're my disciples, if you have this love one for another. So there's, a, there's something that he's telling us that we are to do. Uh, we are to love other people, but that's difficult sometimes because I'm all about me. Me is hungry. Me needs some money. Me want to go hang out Friday night. This is all about me. And sometimes our me's gets us confused with our we's. But we is greater than me. And that's what we're talking about today. I, I, want, I want you to, to, uh, to think about in your own life, what, what are some areas in my life that, 
that maybe I've tried to do on my own. I've tried to figure out stuff on my own. But, but I realize maybe that maybe I do need some people in my life. Maybe I, I do need more than just me. We're going to talk about that today. There's a lady that maybe you've heard of, lived a long time ago as a young girl. Her name is Helen Keller. Helen Keller made a statement, a quote, to be on the screen. It says this, alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. Alone, we can do so little alone, but together we can make a difference. Together we can do more. You know, we is greater than me. And when, when me gets confused with, like, me need, me got, me, it's all about me. And we become selfish people and we don't even realize it. See, God created us to be with other people. God created us to have relationships. God created us to have friends. God created us to live in community. And as we talk about this concept of, of we is greater than me, I, I just want you to think about how am I doing with that? Do, do I try to do everything on my own? Do I try to do, figure out all my own problems? What if, what if you just alienated everybody? And wh why is it that we alienate people in our lives? You ever thought about that? Why is it we alienate some people in our lives? I will tell you the main reason most people alienate people is because they don't trust anybody. We've got a trust problem. So we alienate ourselves. I just figured out on my own. I just do this on my own. Some people are so full of themselves, so much about themselves, they just think they don't need anybody. So many of us, maybe it's because we don't trust people around us. We don't trust you know, what other people can do. I can figure it out. If I do it myself, I know it's done right. But we is greater than me. Why is it that we live and try to live in this protected environment, if you will, this, this protected place, this protected environment where we like, we build a, a, a shield around us, like we, we don't want to get hurt. I mean, we, we don't want anybody to hurt our feelings. I mean, so we live in this protected, secluded environment where it's all about me rather than we. Because, you know, if I, if I tell somebody my feelings, if, if like I rely on somebody, then, you know, I'm going to get hurt. Well, let me help you to understand something. If you're a parent in this room, you've been hurt, right? Because you know when you've got kids, you've heard these words like this, I hate you, right? As a parent, you know you've heard that before. If you have it, just hang on, it's coming, right? Right? For those of you who are not parents, you've, you, you, you might not have ever heard these things like, I, I hate it when you discipline me. I don't like you anymore. You're the worst daddy there's ever been. All those things are said. And you get hurt, but you don't alienate your kids, do you? You don't alienate them and put them to the side. No, you love them. They hurt you, but you love them. Because you are in community. You want to be in relationship with them. God created us to be in community. God created us to live a life that's not just about ourselves. But it's about we, and we is greater than me. You see, in this room today, I, I will tell you, there are no Republicans and there are no Democrats. In this room today, there are no lower income families, middle class or upper class families. In this room today, there is no white, black, Hispanic, or any other ethnicity. In this room today, we're, we're, we're not people that are, that are like uh, people that are far from God and baby believers and, and, and strong, super Christian people. We're just all part of God's family. You see, what happens sometimes is we, we marginalize our own relationships. We, we classify who people are. And, and we, we, we decide at that moment whether we're going to be all about me and the group I'm running with, like all of this certain group of people, or whether I'm going to be about a world that is so much larger than that. I want to help you to understand today that there is a world much larger than all of that we is greater than me. And God called us to live a life that we live in unity with people. Unity is part of the word community. We are to live in unity with people. And sometimes we miss that. When we live a, a united life together, it changes everything. I want to read a scripture to you today, and as I, I read this, I, I want you to, to wrap your mind around really what the word of God is saying to us this is in the New Testament. It's a book called 1 Corinthians. And uh, if you have a Bible, you can go there. Maybe you've got a version, an app on your phone, or it'll be on the screen. But this is what it says. It says the human body has many parts. But the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews. Some are Gentiles. Some are slaves. Some are free. 
but we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit and we all share the same spirit yes the body has many different parts not just one part if the foot says I'm part of the body I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand that does not make it any less a part of the body and if the ear I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye would that make it any less part of the body if the whole body were an eye how would you hear or if your whole body were an ear how would you smell anything but our bodies have many different parts and God has put each part just where he wants it how strange a body would be if it only had one part I want you to think about it for just a moment you see we are all a part of the body of Christ he has uniquely created you as a matter of fact the Bible says this in Genesis chapter 1 he says you are created in the image of God the book of Psalm says this it says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made in his life now, now I wonder if if we don't realize that God has created every person the people you like the people you don't like but we see we're all still part of the body we are all part of the body but we all look a little different I mean what if what if the whole body was I what if there's no foot no hand I mean what would it be like if I said well I, I don't like that group of people that's the reason I said you see we're not in the room today as lower class middle class upper class we're not in the room today as any ethnicity we're not in the room today as Republicans or Democrats we are just part of the body of Christ and every person under the sound of my voice in this room or watching on live stream today you're part of the body of Christ and, and, and once you understand that and you get the concept of what the body is it helps you to identify your part in the body you see whether or not you even believe in God or not the fact is he created you and the fact is this you do have a part in the body whether you even believe in him or not he still created you and he has a plan and a purpose for your life it goes on to say this in the scripture it says yes there are many parts but only one body the eye can never say to the hand I don't need you the head can't say to the feet I don't need you in fact some parts of the body that seem the weakest and least important are actually the most necessary and the parts we regard as the less honorable are those that we clothe the, with the greatest care so we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen while the more honorable parts do not require the special care so God has put together now listen so God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity some of us sometimes we think that our part is the most important let's put it in this context sometimes I think that I am more important sometimes I think I I'm more important because of a political stance that I take because of my ethnicity because I I'm I'm not lower class I, I'm upper class because of a, a school I choose to go to because of the job that I have because of the career because I started a business you know and I'm a business person my wealth I created for myself but you see the the Bible teaches us that we're all part of the body and there's no part that's any less needed than the other part because we are all part of the body of Christ and in that there's there's something that God wants to say to us I love the last part of the scripture it says this this makes for harmony among all of the members so that all members care for each other if one part suffers all the parts suffer with it if one part is honored all the parts are glad the fact is God created us to live in unity we in this room are all part of the body and we have a different role to play you see my purpose in life is different than yours the plan God has for your life is different than the plan he has for my life but he does have a plan for every single person whether you believe in him or not whether you're following Jesus or not he still has a plan for you he still has a purpose in your life and when we can begin to wrap our mind around that we is greater than me like God created me as part of something you're part of a body you're part of the body of Christ and when we can wrap our mind around that but you see what we think about are things like this well we don't we don't all actually all look alike you know there's some of us that are a lot better looking I mean there's some of you that are a lot better looking you know than I am I mean we don't all act alike thank you Jesus for that right I mean we don't all respond alike we don't all work alike we all got different things about us that are different now I want you to think it in the mix of all of that even though we all are different 
The Bible says we're all still part of the body. He said some are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free. We're part of the body of Christ. And with that, we, what can one eye do by itself? What can one hand do by itself? What can one foot do by itself? Alone, we can do so little. But together, we can do so much. I want you to think about it in your life. What does that look like for you? I wonder if sometimes that we would say things like, man, I, I don't really, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I don't really need people in my life. Don't, don't live your life disregarding people because you think that your part is greater than theirs. You think that your responsibility, you think that your purpose is greater than theirs. I mean, when you look at somebody and you say, I mean, you ever said to somebody, man, I don't like your face. Coach Todd, I don't like your face, dude. Right? I mean, you can't just, like, cut the head off because, they, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, do you, do you look at somebody, you ever, you ever looked at somebody's hands and they got some of them little short, nubby fingers? You ever seen those people before? Yeah? You know what I'm talking about. It's not weird. They just got short, nubby fingers. They're kind of gross looking. I look at people's feet. You know what I'm saying? You got on flip-flops, I'm going to check out your toes because somebody got some gnarly toes. I know some of you in the room that's got some gnarly toes, right? But it's part of the body, right? You don't just like say, well, you know, I gotta, I'm going to cut those off because they kind of look gnarly. No, right? You don't say, well, man, those little short nubby fingers, what are they good? No, you don't cut them off. They're part of the body. And it's just like the body of Christ. We all don't look alike, act alike. We all work differently. We don't, we don't all work alike. But the fact is we're all part of the body. And, and what can you do when you say, well, I don't need the ear, I just cut it off? No, you can't do that. You don't cut off part of the body because, because it looks different than you. See, when we come united together, it changes everything because we is greater than me. We say it this way at Christian Life Center. I need you, and you need me. I need you. Look at somebody and say, I need you. Tell them right now, I need you. Guess what? You need me. I need you and you need me. And when we say it that way, you begin to think, man, what, what does that mean? How can you say that? I, I mean, I don't really know if I need everybody or not. I mean, I don't know if I need the person next to me. Have you ever thought about really the reality of that? You see, everybody wants a connection. I need you and you need me. Why are we missing the connection sometimes? Because we identify that maybe, maybe I'm not really person that needs anybody else but you know what we do all need people everybody's looking for some sort of connection I need you you need me so much so what, what let's just say if you said well I, I don't I don't need certain people well I mean what if we just said well I, I don't need doctors and nurses really how's that gonna work out for you I mean what if we just said well we don't need school teachers Oh, that, that's going to work out real great, right? No, you do need people. Don't, don't be a person that says, well, I, I don't need anybody. I mean, what if we just said, well, you know, I, I, I don't really need parents. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I don't care if you haven't talked to your parents in a long time. I don't care if you're completely separated from your parents. You needed your parents. You know why? Because you wouldn't be breathing if they had not provided life to you, Right? You see, we need people in our lives. And sometimes I think we arrive at a place where we're like, man, I don't know if I need. What if, what if you didn't have any mentors in your life? What if there was nobody caring about you, guiding you, speaking wisdom into your life? You see, we all need each other. We is greater than me. And I, and I wonder where we miss the fact of what God's plan is in our life because we're living in this state of mind like, well, you know, it's just about me and I'm the guy. I'm the one. But you see, we is greater than me. You can put it in the context of, of teamwork. You can put it in the context of, of any type of team working together. We'll put it in the context of, of uh, a football, since football season is starting. I mean, think about it. I mean, you start thinking about like the kicker. You know, the kicker, he can, he can, he can split the uprights every single time if he's on the field. I mean, he's got it down, he's got it. I mean, the quarterback, they can throw every single time when there's nobody on the field charging them, right? But, I mean, you put somebody out there who is, is running after them, they're going to chase them down, they're going to tackle them, they got to move, they got to maneuver, they still got to be able to, to hit it. You see, they cannot score a point without the rest of the team. What I'm trying to get to you is this. 
you're not good enough you can't be enough we got to have each other and and even in the analogy of uh, of looking at a, a a punter or looking at a a kicker or or if you're looking at, at a at a quarterback i mean no team scores points without the entire team you can be the best quarterback there is but if you don't have a line standing in front of you to protect you you're not going to get a pass off and it's sure not going to be accurate think about in your own life we have got to have each other but some of us live our life thinking oh it's just me man i got this figured out when all the while God didn't even design you to live that way. I mean, put it in this, this context. Team sports. Think about team sports. We've got to have each other. And it's the same way in your life as a believer. It's the same way in your relationship with God. See, God didn't create you to just live for you. God created you to live for others as well. One of the ways that we say that here at Christian Life Center is, is that we do life together. We do life together. We do that in the context of what we call CLC groups. CLC groups, we do life together where you, you come and there's a, a Sunday worship time like this, but, but then there's groups of people that meet together. There's groups of people that have coffee together, pe- groups of people who maybe go through some sort of curriculum together, learning, growing spiritually together. There are groups of people who just share life. They just do life together and in the context I wonder if sometimes we miss what God's plan is for our life because I'm always about me I'm always about me there are several people in the room besides our our team that's here today that have played team sports maybe in high school or college maybe some of you even still playing some team sports in different ways and you know that you can't do it alone you got to have people with you in a team sport and it's the same way in your relationship with God God created you to do life with people and we say it in the context of, of CLC groups here. As a matter of fact, in your seat back in front of you, if you look around you, there are a couple of cards in there. I'm going to ask you to get them out. That's one that looks like this and one that looks like this. Just grab those cards out of that seat back in front of you. Because this really tells you what this particular church, how we do life and how we do community together. This card right here on the back side of it talks about three different types of groups. There are life groups, connect groups, and interest groups. It tells you what they're about. You see, it's about doing life together because we is greater than me. I can't do everything on my own. I need people around me. I need to live in community with people. And that's what, through this church, through, through how we do ministry here, like when you get out of this corporate big area where there's small groups of people, four or five that are having coffee together. We got four or five guys that have had coffee together at Panera Bread at 6 a.m. on Thursday morning for years. They just do life together. Just grab some coffee. See, what I'm talking about is that we is greater than me. On this card, it tells you about different parts of CLC and about groups. If you look on the back side of it, it explains the different groups that we're getting ready to launch. Actually, on the week of September the 8th, all of our groups launch for the fall, and they run uh, from now until almost until Christmas. But it tells you about the groups, and I want to encourage you to be, uh, be part of that because we is greater than me. When you realize that that you can't do life alone then you pull other people around you you see first Corinthians chapter 12 that I read a while ago it, it made it very plain it teaches us that we're part of a body and every part is needed every part is essential I put it this way I, I don't think that you can choose Jesus without choosing community I really believe that you know why because Jesus created the New Testament church the left left half of the Bible the Old Testament they did life a certain way but the right side of the Bible the last one-third of the Bible the New Testament they did life another way and Jesus created the New Testament church he lived his life here probably most of you have heard the story that Jesus died on the cross for a reason for all mankind that we could have redemption from our life of sin that he gave his life to be a sacrifice for our sin and then the Bible just a few days after that tells the account of where Jesus ascended into heaven And he said in John chapter 14, I'm going to prepare a place for you, which is heaven. But before he left, he established the New Testament church. And in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, he established what the New Testament church was to look like. And it was in groups that says, you are to go and share meals with people in their homes, in small groups. He said share meals together. He said also pray together. It's important that you pray together. He said also not only share meals and pray together, he said, but but you meet one another's needs. 
you might say, man, I, I don't really need anything right now. I don't, I don't really need anybody. There'll come a time where you're going to need a doctor. There'll come a time when you're going to need a mentor. There'll come a time where you're going to need a coach. There'll come a time in your life that you're going to need some people to pray for you. There'll come a time that you're going to need somebody. You see, Jesus established that we are to live our life in that context of doing life together. And as he established the New Testament church, he said these people come together, small groups of people, they met in homes, they prayed together, they shared meals together, and they met each other's needs. That was the establishment of the New Testament church. So the things we're talking about at Christian Life Center, we talk about groups and we encourage you to be part of a group and, and, and to sign up to be part of a group that runs for about 12 or 13 weeks this fall and then we'll take a break and do it again next year in the spring semester. It's, it's not for the benefit of the, the church at Christian Life Center. It is the plan of God. It is how Jesus established the church. You come together corporately, meet together, worship together, but you go back with small groups of people, you have some meals together, you pray together, and you meet each other's needs. And that's the way that Jesus established the church. And I wonder sometimes if we miss that context. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. I'm going to read a scripture to you. The Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the church at Philippi. And he says this. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? He said, then make me truly happy. I get this agreeing wholeheartedly with each other loving one another and working together with one mind and one purpose don't be selfish don't try to impress others be humble thinking of others as better than yourselves don't look out only for your own interest but take an interest in others too you see the part of living in community is realizing you're not living your life just for you you weren't created just for you, but you were created for others as well. You have something unique to offer to people. You have a gift and a talent that God gave you specifically. And it's not just for you, but it's for others. And the way that you pursue that, the way you experience that, is by living in community. It's a great woman of faith that many of you will recognize. And the quote that I love by Mother Teresa says this, a life not lived for serving others is not really a life at all. See, it's not just always about you, but it's about others. You can walk out on that playing field of whatever it may be. You can carry the ball, carry the hockey stick, you can take the bat with you. Guess what? You'll never score anything without others around you. We is greater than me. And one of the things that we need to realize in our life of following Jesus is that exactly what Mother Teresa said. A life not serving others is really no life at all. If you only live for yourself, I'll just tell you, you're living a selfish and arrogant life. Not many people will ever want to be around you. But if you realize that God created me not only for me, but he created me for others, you'll realize that we is greater than me. When we realize God created us to live in community, and then we realize that we were not just created for ourselves, but we were created for others, we begin to realize that God has a plan and a purpose for me. And some of you in the room today, you're... You might even say, man, I, I don't even know this God you're talking about. I don't even believe in God. And that's okay. You don't have to believe in God to come to church here. As a matter of fact, we would absolutely love it if you would come every single week and you don't even have to believe in God. You don't have to believe in Jesus. We just want you to come. Because here's what I know. I know what the Bible says. It says, it says this. You were created in his image. And you are part of the body. Even if you don't believe you're part of the body. I mean, you are part of the body because that's what the Bible says. And, it, and you don't have to believe. You can, you can come to this church all the time. You can come and never believe. You can say, I don't even believe in God. But still come every week. You know why? Because I know you're part of the body. And once you realize you're part of the body, you realize that God has created you with a plan and a purpose for your life. 
Every person under the sound of my voice in this room or watching on live stream today, God has a plan and a purpose for you. You might not have ever identified it yet, but he has it. And once you begin to identify that, everything changes. And you begin to live in community together. Two of the greatest points of connection for this local church at Christian Life Center is two great points of connection. Rather than just going to church on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, whatever it is you do, that is through groups where you can find a group of people that you can hang out with, you can do life together with, whether that's in a, a life group, a connect group, or an interest group. The other one is through a dream team. A dream team is just simply, simply where you find your purpose. It's, it's where you find out what your purpose is because you do have a purpose. You're part of the body. Remember what I said, the eye, the ear? You can't just cut the head off and say, well, let's chop him those toes off there. I mean, they're kind of gnarly looking anyway. No, we all have part of the body. We're part of the body. And once you realize that, you realize that you have a purpose. God gave a purpose to every person in this room. And our goal is to help people to discover their purpose in God. And a dream team is simply a team of people who serve together with their talents, their gifts from God, in their purpose. They, they do that together. And, and when they do that, it's in community. As a matter of fact, today at Christian Life Center, when you came onto this campus, in whatever area, whatever, if you've got family, if you've got kids, if you've got students in 6th stu- and 12th grade, if you had a cup of coffee, if somebody helped you park out front, if somebody greeted you, handed you one of those orange things, they're living out their purpose. The people that were on the stage this morning, they were singing, playing music, that might not be your purpose. You might not know anything about that, but that's their purpose. You see, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And once you identify what that is, you become part of a team, then it changes everything. Because now you're living in community, get this, with more than 100 volunteers that volunteered all of their time today, more than 100 today, to be sure that today happened, that you had a great experience in being here. You see, that is what it means to live in community. When you begin to realize your gifts and talents, as a matter of fact, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it's in your notes, it says this, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Get this, use them well to serve one another. That's what the Bible says. He's given you gifts. Everybody's got one. Use them well. If you're not using your gifts to serve other people, if you're not using your gifts to impact the lives of other people, to expand the kingdom of God, it doesn't mean you don't have a gift. It means you've not identified and discovered your purpose yet. And we're going to learn more about discovering your purpose next Sunday on the weekend experience. But today I, I want to help you in identifying that two greatest days of your life as I get ready to close the two greatest days of your life the day you were born the day you discovered your purpose the two greatest days of your life the day you were born and the day that you discovered your purpose God has a purpose for your life he's got a plan for your life if CLC is the place where you're doing life if, if this is the place where you're being spiritually fed, if this is the place where, where you're soaking up the worship, if this is the place where you feel like, man, you're, you're identifying, I want to tell you that community is the best thing that you can do. Not just come on a weekend experience, but to live in community, to unify. Unify yourself together. Be part of a group that's happening throughout the week outside of, of the Sunday experience in a large format where you just hang out with some people, have some coffee. I mean, we got a running group that's getting ready to start. Every Saturday morning at 7 o'clock. I mean, you can get out there and you can beat feet on the street. I'm not going to be there, okay? But, I mean, there's going to be some people there, right? Whatever it is, just connect to live in community with people. Live in community by taking the gifts that God has given you and making an impact. We is greater than me. And today, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do something with me. I'm going to ask if you would, if you see one of these cards, I'm going to ask every person to just grab every card that's, that's in the seats around you, and I'm going to pray. So I'm going to ask you to just put it in your hand. As your pastor, if I'm your spiritual leader, if, if this is the place where you're coming, growing in God, I'm going to ask you to put this in your hand. You might say, Pastor Eddie, I, I'm not committing. That's okay, you don't have to commit. You don't have to do anything that I'm talking to you about, about with groups. But here's what I will tell you. As your spiritual leader, as your pastor, If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to know how to grow in your faith, here's how we do it at CLC. Weekend experiences, be part of a group. 
be serving on a dream team. Two greatest points of connection is to be part of a group. And I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to ask God to, to just talk to you about you. Today, if you finish and you're holding this card and you're not interested in being a part of a group, no harm, no foul, but I just want you to know that I'm praying that God will speak to you about you. And whatever that is, okay, that you will identify and you'll pursue God's plan for your life. There's another card in the seat back. Some of them it says, I serve there. We're going to talk about that next week, but if you're interested in serving on any dream team, you can fill that out as well. But I'm going to ask you if you would to just bow your head with me today as we pray over we is greater than me. Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity we have today to be able to learn from your word. God, I thank you for this uh, amazing group of people that came today. Lord, I pray that the word of God that has been spoken today, the scriptures that we read from the Bible that we believe in, that our faith is founded upon, the life that you live, Jesus, to live a life of purpose in front of us. God, I pray that those words, the inspiration of the scripture, and the experience of this day will be life-changing for people in this room. God, I know that, that you desire us to live in community with people. God, to do life together. And Lord, as we hold these cards in our hands, praying over the groups that are going to be happening coming up, and Lord, some people in the room are already part of groups, and some maybe are considering. Lord, I just pray that for each of us, you'll, you'll talk to me about me. God, even if this is not my church, I just pray that you'll help me to understand what the principle of your word is, is that we is greater than me, and you designed me, you created me very uniquely with a plan and a purpose. You created me to live in community with other people. Lord, you created me not only for myself but for others. Lord, I pray even those that may be in this room today that don't know you as Savior, as your head is bowed today, if you're in this room and maybe you don't even know who Jesus is, maybe you don't believe in him, I want you to know we're so honored and proud that you came today. That you would trust us enough to sit in this room or to watch on live stream. But I want you to know that he does love you. Whether you've ever loved him back or not, he loves you. And I want you to know that he cares so much about you that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. And at some point in your life, my prayer is that you'll believe in it. And if today you maybe want to make that decision, it's just as easy as in the decision to say, I choose to follow Jesus. And it's a prayer. So I'm just going to say a prayer. And if you would like to say that prayer along with me, you can just say that quietly right at your seat. And I want you to know, if you say the prayer with sincerity, he hears you, he'll forgive you, and today you can become a follower of Jesus. Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Jesus, I want to thank you for dying on the cross for Eddie Jones and for every other person in this room and every other person on live stream. As a matter of fact, for every person around the world, more than 7 billion people who are currently breathing up the oxygen that you gave us. You created us in your likeness and image. You sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for us, and we want to say thank you for doing that. Thank you that in the midst of my sin, in the midst of my messed up life, that you would love me enough to give me salvation. So Lord, today I choose that you would forgive me. I ask that you will forgive me of all of the sin in my life, and I choose you to be my Savior. I'm asking you, Lord, that you'll accept me as your child, and I'll receive you as my Savior. And that from this day forward, I'll live my life to bring glory and honor to your name. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.